Hi guys, Luton here, and today we're going to be looking at Armour 3 again. I'm going to be giving you a tour of the island of Stratus, because a lot of people have been asking kind of what the game is about, what does it look like, and they really want to sort of get a, a good feel and understanding of it. And I thought a really good way to do that is to actually have a look around the map itself, really get a good understanding, because when I started playing, I didn't really know anything it was, I didn't really sort of know the layout, um, but it's quite nice to actually kind of get an overview of it, especially if you don't have the game, to kind of get eyes on just what it is that you can be expecting from the game. So in the editor mode here, uh, it's non-combat, uh, and we'll just be flying around. I'm going to take you around the island, just point out some of the key features and talk a little bit about sort of the map and its layout. Um, one other thing to give you an idea about size, uh, this island Stratus right now, it's 20 kilometers square. That's what the beta uh, is focused on at the moment, is this island. But the main island in uh, the actual full release of the game it's going to be 270 kilometers square. That's over 13 times the size of this island Stratus right now. So it, once you sort of once we get up in the heli and we start having a look around, that's going to give you an idea just of the massive, massive scale that the full game is going to take place in. So let's get up here and get started. Now this is the Hummingbird. This is a sort of transport ready non-combat vehicle. It doesn't have any sort of gun mountings on it. You can see it's got no rocket pods or uh, minigun machine gun mountings. Right, and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to take us in a kind of clockwise tour around, and uh, as I say, we'll point out some key features along the way. So we're starting off here, this is Stratus Air Base, and this is your main kind of starting point for nearly all missions. Um, you'll be regrouping here with your team, you'll be getting helicopter pickups, repair pickups, or whatever. Um, I should also point out that basically, the way the multiplayer works is a lot of users within the armor community create missions to run for multiplayer and you'll be taking part in. There's many different ones, Wasteland is one of those but another one is uh, Invade and Annex and this is a really fantastic uh, multiplayer game mode which requires you as a team to fight against the AI. A lot of the multiplayer missions are kind of AI based within armor and you would think sort of well you know how is, that's not really exciting is it? It's brutally exciting especially when you see how difficult the AI are and trust me they are seriously seriously difficult I'm going to talk about that a little bit more on another video um, and explain a little bit more about why that's good and bad I mean actually I'll say one thing the whole thing about it being a cop armor really it's about sort of teamwork and tactical teamwork at that and you may think that there's no fun whatsoever in playing against AI well there is you know the, you do have the option to play against other players but really Unless you're on a, you can host your private servers, etc., to play with other people, and a lot of sort of, I would say, clans do this, and it's probably something I'm going I'm to look to do. However, the AI does feature very, very well, and um, the way it plays out is very interesting. You'll get a better idea of that soon when I can post something up to show. But anyway, so here we are. This is one of the first sort of towns outside Stratus, and this one is called Aegea Mariner. Okay, and you can see it's got a bit of a kind of uh, harbour going on over here, harbour wall and uh, beach over here. It's got a dry riverbed that runs right through the town and you can see up over there in the distance uh, that's a military range there. And you can just sort of pan around and go have a look. So the town's quite complex. Uh, you can enter all buildings, first, second floors, etc. You usually have doors that you can enter and um, you can always have some quite interesting urban combat within the towns of armour because of their sort of ability for you to go in all buildings other you know other shooter titles you often are prevented from entering certain buildings but in armor you pretty much usually can enter all buildings which allows you to kind of use anything that's around you at your disposal anyway let's head on around the coast now i've set the uh, time period right now to kind of early evening so you get this nice sun across everything and uh, I can jump out to third person because that also gives you a nice kind of overview look of just what it looks like. A lot of people have been commenting on my videos already about how amazing the game looks and it, it really really does. I'm drop a little bit of height here as well. We fly a little bit lower around some of these rocks and stuff. There's a couple of small islands um, around sort of satelliting around Stratus and the first one we come up to is uh, Xeros here as it's labelled on the map and uh, Xeros is this tiny little rock outcrop over here 
I've never actually found um, a literal use for this island so far in the games that I've played, but I can imagine that there would be certain missions where you would undoubtedly uh, this would play a role. Uh, potentially maybe drop off some troops or gain an objective or something. But as I say, I've never actually played one which had an objective for that so far. This is something that I really like about um, the map itself as well, are these kind of rocks that come out from the land here, right by the sea. Just like the way they've done this and the design of them. It's really quite cool. But again, you don't really... It's interesting, when you're flying around you get this kind of curious perspective and um, it all changes when you get down on the ground. I mean, for example, as we fly around this way, we're flying uh, sort of... Where are we going? Like, I don't know, southeast? And uh, the trees here, they look very kind of just like toy trees. But as soon as you get down on the ground, the perspective of everything really changes. And you see that actually they're a bit more, there's a bit more to them. And the ground at distance can often seem very kind of undetailed, etc. When you actually suddenly get down on the ground, you see that everything looks a little bit more detailed. And it just feels much more real. Okay, let's head this way. So we're heading on down now. I think we're heading south right at the moment. And uh, we're heading towards... Well, we're heading sort of southeast actually. And we're heading towards Camino Firing Range. Now Camino Firing Range is... You can see it over here. It's one of the main sort of installations around the map and you have a lot of features around it. However, I just remembered I want to point out one other thing and providing I can find it, it's up over the top here. And there's several little sort of military bases around the map and right here in fact, look, here we go, right on it. So we've got it right here, this is uh, Camp Regain. There's a few sort of military bases around the map which can be used obviously for uh, landing zones, they can be mission objectives that you have to capture, they can have a variety of uses. So here we go, there's a designated helicopter landing pad right there, and you can see it's got various kind of uh, defensive structures around it. Over here we've got some radio towers, and in the distance there we've got a radar station we'll go take a look at. But anyway, let's head on down to... Um, We'll head on down to the firing range right now. So as we come down here you can see we've got a big forest behind us, then we've got this open sort of small outpost right here, a bit of destroyed buildings. And then as we come down itself, here's the firing range, some targets there, target range and the installation, and lighthouse obviously up on top of the hill here. And this lighthouse right here, it can be pretty useful uh, when you're actually in game to deploy troops around the lighthouse here. Um, often on the back side of this lighthouse it's a good place for sort of inserting troops and uh, I've been quite a few games where we've dropped people in on the back side here of the uh, lighthouse. So sort of on this kind of grass area here or down by the buildings you often drop a helicopter in but also as we t move around here you can see that little bay down there here that's often a real good landing zone. Um, Multiple times so far in game I've actually dropped people in on that zone there. So you like come in with the uh, Ghost Hawk and just drop the guys straight in on there. And they're good to go. They've got good cover from the firing range if you've got enemy troops in here. So they can make their way up over this hill and then sort of down into the base itself. Okay, one other island to point out as we go around this way. And it's this one over here. And this is Pythos. It's a little bit way out from land, but you can imagine that basically uh, it might have some landing purpose. If you wanted to perhaps drop a sniper unit off, you could maybe get in here with the helicopters and drop them off as a sniper unit. And this is going to take us further down towards Mike 26, which is the radar station. And one of the best things about armor that I've found so far is just the the sense of immersiveness of how the fact that there is an entire landscape to to fight and and, and travel around um, as opposed to so many other games where you're forced into these sort of uh, 
artificial maps, you know, these kind of designated zones that you can't escape from. But you really have the feeling with an armor that you can kind of, you know, leave it. You can go anywhere you want to go and all, all kind of situations will change on the fly. The fact that it has dynamic, you know, weather, dynamic light, uh, you know, the course of the day will change. A mission that you begin in the daytime may change and end up being a full-on night mission, you know, with night vision and, and helicopter insertions in the night designated by, you know, light markers and stuff. It, it's just th that sense of complete immersion is, is what's really, really exciting about the game. So as we approach the radar station right here, you'll see a very kind of different landscape, much more exposed, barren, and over here we've got some small buildings down here, heading back you can see uh, Stratus airbase there, like right in the distance. Um, so here we are at the radar station, and this is often quite a focal point for all sorts of missions in the game. We'll come out to third person so we can have a little look. Um, yeah, it's really kind of atop the main hillside, the mountains if you will here in uh, Stratus and as I say it has these kind of roads leading up here various little outposts it can be a bit of a tricky base to take because of uh, how well defended it can be um, but it's obviously a really good sort of objective position to take on right, let's head down over this way So really what I wanted to do today was just kind of fly around a little bit and just show you kind of how it looks, give you a real sort of feel of what this game looks like. We've done a couple of small tutorials so far, and as I say I will have some, uh, some multiplayer action coming up, but I thought this would be good just to give people kind of, like I say, an overview, look at the map. Right, let's head over here to the next base. So we've got a couple more points to look at on the way. I'm going to fly around a little bit quicker now, seeing as we've kind of got a good sort of look and feel. The next one is uh, Camp Maxwell up here. So from the radar station there, you kind of cross across here. You've got a bit of a valley. And then you have this forest through the hillside right here. And sitting right atop of this forest, as we bank over here, and just as we get a little bit of height actually okay and here we are we can see down here this is camp Maxwell hidden amongst the forest on the top of this hill this is a really interesting good base here because of where it sort of overviews where it looks at you can see it's quite close it sort of overviews a huge amount of valleys there's some towns and little encampments further down the hill here in fact you might even be able to see yeah, sort of further down there, you see there's little towns. So this can be actually as well like a pretty good staging point uh, if you have some vehicle availability. And also you can see it has reasonable proximity. It looks quite far, but once you sort of move up to that crest of the hill there, you've got an overlook over to the valley, and before you know it, you're up into that radar station. So it can be a good staging point for um, helicopters to safely fly up this south valley drop your guys off on the helipad here and uh, you can get out of there, you can exit yourself as a heli without fear of uh, AA attack from anti-aircraft troops on the ground. Alright so we're flying down this uh, south road here and this is really we're just flying down to the very last point on the map here, right at the very southernmost point of the map. Okay, I mean basically we've got a bit of a lighthouse right here. As you'd expect, because it's quite a sort of rocky peninsula down here. So we've got a light, little lighthouse to warn people. And then we're going to head straight on up on the west coast here. You can see how the sun has started to change and go down since we started flying around here. So that's that lighting at work changing the look and feel of the environment. Okay. So as we come around here, there's a few sort of little bays, little sort of shack house down there, got a beach uh, sun umbrella. 
Okay, another one of the sort of main towns that you'll definitely have some objectives for is uh, this one right here, Gurna. And uh, Gurna is a sort of again sort of medium-sized place. It's not as big as um, it's not as big as the Mariner. But it sits within this little valley here. It can be quite a tricky one to cleanly take because of its sort of proximity. You have to you don't have a lot of range onto the targets there, so you really have to kind of get in actually on the base itself in order to clear it out. Okay, let's fly off. And uh, there's some other encampments and things here. We've got Camp Tempest, which I think I potentially just flew past, or is it up here, I think? Yeah, here it is. Okay, Camp Tempest, another very, very small military base, little jetty harbour. And uh, again, that can be a good sort of uh, drop-off point. It's a reasonable distance from Gurna that you won't come under attack, usually from AA troops, so it can be a good option there. And that's just about it, really. We've done our little sort of fly-past of the Stratus Island. Um, as I say, though, there are various other little buildings, positions, uh, sniper nests, mortar unit nests, etc. all around the map. But um, again, something I wanted to point out was when you're at this kind of height, okay, what it gives you is this amazing feeling of perspective. You know, you really feel like you're up high, you can see everything going on on the ground, and, and forget, you know, remember sort of when you're in, in a real game, you, you see enemy troops, friendly troops moving around in on the ground, you can call in intel, you can have people drop smoke markers down on the ground for you, but what I love is that you have this real feeling of scale. You know, you can be right up here, and then you can say, okay, we've got some guys down here in this house right here. So we're going to put the helicopter down on the ground, we're going to come in for a little landing here. Alright, and then once you get out, suddenly everything has this completely different feel to it. And you have this kind of scale and perspective and that just makes everything seem so much real. And like I said before about buildings being able to enter, it's pretty much the case that you can get into any building should you need to, to you know, lay down or cover a position or whatever. But again, as I was talking about before with the trees and stuff, up from the air, they seem very much like little sort of matchstick trees. But once you actually come down into a valley, you see how everything suddenly seems so much more real? I mean, look at the detail as well. On the wood and the, the leaves and everything. So it really helps you to feel that much more sort of immersed in the game. That sort of feeling of actually being here, being involved. And that's what's so good about this game, is just the, the change of scale and the openness of the environment that you're in. And as I say, in, in upcoming videos we're going to take this sort of perspective of, of scale and engagement on into actual sort of live games. So you'll be able to see how this you know, immense scale plays out. And transport helicoptering is one of the best things about it so far for me. Um, the fact that you can be sort of coming back on sorties, picking up guys, dropping them off. It has that real, real role to play. It's hugely enjoyable. Right, so we're going to fly back to Stratus Base, just around the corner, and then we'll finish up. But I hope you've enjoyed our sort of little visit around today. Let me relax with it a little bit. It's not exactly, uh, you know, full throttle, high octane action, but it gives you an overview. It gives you an idea of sort of perspective and scale. People are going to be able to use uh, today's video as a drinking game for how many times I say scale and perspective. But it's true, you know, that's that's really what it is, and. As I say, that's that's. I think that's what it is about armor that's very appealing, is this sense that you are a component within a larger ongoing struggle. And I think that's also why the sort of AI, you know, the, the player versus AI sort of PVE, if you will, works very well for armor because it. What's what's great about this game is it's not about sort of one-upping people. It's not about beating the other people. It, that, that isn't the main feature of the game. I'm going to drop us down right here. 
I'll just give my final thoughts. So yeah, the reason that the sort of sense of space and openness and the size of the maps, and the reason that the fact that you play mainly against AI on the multiplayer is because the, the focus of this game is very, very different to that of other sort of, for want of a better word, sort of FPS, okay, first-person shooters. Now, the thing is, you can't really call this game a first-person shooter because you can go into third-person as well. And so for that reason, I think it's why a lot of people call it like a military sim. Um, again, that kind of actually leads into the whole kind of fighting against AI thing, the fact that a lot of people refer to it more as a military sim than really a shooter, because it's not necessarily about sort of two teams battling it out. For sure, you can do that. You can set that up. You can have two player teams, but you know, you have to have a serve, etc, etc, arrange it, get all the people there. Um, it's not like, don't think of this as like Battlefield or anything like that, where you can just go quick match and you'll be playing against other people. There's different game modes in multiplayer. You will encounter other players. You will often, perhaps, for example, waste and etc. You can fight against them. But for the most part, the focus, the emphasis, is on this idea of being part of something bigger, being part of a team. So you fulfill a role, okay? And even more so than Battlefield. We always talk in Battlefield about how you fulfill a role, be you as a support player, an engineer, assault, whatever, and you sort of play that role. That is amplified in armor okay because in armor you you really do have to pick a very specific role in the game okay if you pick a helicopter pilot that's what you're doing for that round unless you back out or change it okay you won't be sort of helicopter pilot and then you drop off and jump out that's that's not how it works you will be a helicopter pilot and that's what you're doing if you select that role if you want to be a medic you have to run with your team and be a medic and that's your role so that's really how the game works kind of differently to other sort of shooter environments and uh, that's what's good about it. You know, people come here for that. And that's what you should expect from it as a game. If you want a game where you have to play a very specific role and fit into the team. And uh, again, that sense of cooperation and teamwork to main, you know, achieve your objectives. Again, that is the focus of the game. It's not about getting crazy KDs. It's not about getting scores. In fact, I'm yet to enter into any game in armor where anybody really even mentioned or was perhaps even aware of their kind of KD. If you get killed on the way to your objective, it really doesn't matter. And the, the thing is as well, you may have spent sort of 45 minutes actually moving to that objective before you got taken out. My KD, you know, you can often find it's quite low in these games because of the length of time it takes you to actually engage anyone. Um, it really is a very different animal uh, compared to other shooters and uh, I think I'll be really sort of exploring that a lot more in, in further upcoming videos to really sort of get into the uh, to the meat of what this game's about. Anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and as I say I hope this has given you a good kind of perspective a little overview <laughs> perspective there we go again but it is <laughs> I hope it gives you a good perspective on what sort of scale you may be involved in within this game how it feels how it looks and what kind of environment you're going to be operating in if you get into armor, if you want to sort of try this game out. I would hugely advise it. So far, I've had an absolute blast, and uh, I can't imagine not wanting to play this game. It's absolutely fantastic, and it really does fulfill a lot of things that I have wanted to have in games up to this point and haven't been able to. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you've enjoyed it, please drop me a like, and I'll see you very soon for some more Armor 3 action.